welcome to Brain Stuff. I'm Jonathan Strickland. And I'm Ben Bolin. And Ben, I understand we have an interesting question today. Oh yeah, this is a good one. All right, so Jonathan, mm -hmm. are you ready? Yep. That's not the question. Okay. All right, how do astronomers measure distance? How are they able to measure how far away a star is? Ah, right. So it turns out, you know, that measuring the distance to a star is an interesting problem. So astronomers have come up with two different techniques to estimate how far away any given star might be. Now that first technique involves triangulation or parallax. So the Earth orbits the Sun, right? Yeah. Well, as it orbits that sun, there's a diameter of orbit of about 186 million miles. So by looking at a star one day and then maybe six months later looking at it again, astronomers can see a difference in the viewing angle for that star. So with a little trigonometry, which is frankly terrifying to me, the different angles yield the distance. So this technique works for stars that are about 400 light years away from Earth or closer. Now there's no direct method currently available to measure the distance to stars that are further than 400 light years from Earth. But there's a, an approximation, right? Yes, and this is a pretty clever one. This is the second technique. Astronomers can use brightness to figure out a star's distance. So they do this because it turns out that a star's color spectrum is a good indication of its actual brightness. So like blue, white, etc. The relationship between color and brightness has been proven using the several thousand stars that are close enough to Earth to have their distance measured directly. That would be the 400 light years and closer. So astronomers can look at a distant star, determine its color spectrum, and from the color, then they can determine the star's actual brightness. By knowing the actual brightness and comparing it to the apparent brightness seen from Earth, that is by looking at how dim the star has actually become. Once its light reaches the Earth, they can determine that the distance of the star is whatever it happens to be. Right, and uh, there's some other stuff we should probably yeah, talk about. Yeah, I've got some trivia for you, Ben. Oh, good, okay. All right, so let's talk about some of the astronomical units that astronomers use, including yeah. the astronomical unit. So the astronomical unit refers to the distance between Earth and the Sun, the average distance. It's about 149 million kilometers or so. Then you've got the light year. Yeah, what is a light year? So a light year is when, uh, it's like a regular year, but with fewer calories. Huh? Uh, actually, of course, the light year is the distance that light can travel through the vacuum of space within the span of one Earth year. So that's pretty big because light's pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, we're talking just under 10 trillion kilometers. That's a pretty long distance, but I've got something that's even longer than that, and that is a parsec. Hang on, is this a Star Wars reference? It can be, but all right, so parsec in Star Wars sounds like it's a, a unit of time. It's, yeah. it's actually a unit of distance. And the way it works is you talk about the distance between the, our sun and some other astronomical object that has a one second arc degree difference in parallax angle. Now that essentially means that when we look at the star and we compare it to the sun and we do that again at another point in the mm -hmm. Earth's orbit, we get that one second arc degree. That distance actually ends up being 3.26 light years. So it's even longer. So there you go, astronomical units. Wait, uh, so the Kessel Run. We'll get to it, we'll get to it. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, while you guys have enjoyed this video, you should show your love to us by liking it and then subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more questions we're gonna be answering, like the Kessel Run. Thank you. So Ben, the Kessel Run is in fact a smuggling route in the Star Wars universe. Now, the retconned explanation of why Han Solo refers to the parsecs is that this route goes through several black holes. And okay. for a ship to be safe, it has to go around the black holes as much as possible. So the safest route is probably around 50. Team parsecs, but Han Solo, he's a daredevil, and so he cuts off several parsecs and makes it more of a 12 parsec, or less than 12 parsec run. Oh, that's the line. Yeah. But, uh, but um, is that is that because of the force or something, or? No. Han Solo doesn't believe in force. He's 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 all skill, man. It has right. nothing to do with some. It's been a long time since I watched Star Trek, so I don't really, I don't know. <laughs>